Hello and welcome to coverage of Grand Prix Pittsburgh standard format here at day one, round one. Welcome Maria Bartholdi here in the booth, joined by Andrew Brown of R&D. Hi Andrew, how are you doing this morning? Oh, I'm doing great. How are you, Maria? Excellent. I'm ready to watch some magic. How about you? Oh yeah, I'm so excited. All right, so we've got Keith White there on the left side of your screen and Matthew Varsity on the right. And, you know, since it's round one, what we like mm -hmm. to do, Andrew, is kind of get our opportunity to showcase some more unconventional decks. Oh, wow, that sounds great. So I'm very excited. Uh, one of these in particular might be a pretty spicy brew. So we're going to check things out. All right, we are underway here at Grand Prix Pittsburgh. All right, we're going to scry first thing here from Matthew Barsity's <laughs> Alfir and Void in the deck. Yeah, not normally a card you see in the format currently due to all the heavy uh, color costs and... All right, there you go. Hope of Giraper is the first play here. Yeah, I mean, I am uh, hopeful <laughs> that this match is going to be awesome because Hope of Giraper, <laughs> not a card we see very often. No, no, not at all. And it's going to fall down to a fatal push there. Ooh. But we have kind of a clue of what's going on uh, in Matthew's deck with that play with the Hope of Giraper. And, you know, why not keep the hope alive here? <laughs> We're going to play Heart <laughs> of Kieran on two. If you don't remember Hope of Gearper, it's a flying 1-1 one, one for one. You sacrifice it until your next turn. Target player who is dealt combat damage by Hope of Gearper this turn can't cast non-creature spells. Argyle's Bloodfast is going to be the play there for Keith White. Oh, wow. An Inventor's Fair. Inventor's Fair. All right. Wow. I really wonder, on, wonder what's going on in Matthew's deck, but it seems like he's some mono black-faced artifact deck. All right. So we're going to crew with the Scrap Trawler get in there with the Heart of Kieran. Yeah, Mono Black Affinity is what he's named his deck. Mono Black Affinity, got it. Oh, Another wow. harp, Hope of Gearper. Yeah, you thought Affinity was just happening in Modern. <laughs> oh no, we have it here in Standard in Pittsburgh. <laughs> History of Benalia here for Keith. Chapter one, we're gonna get a Knight Token. This is one of my favorite cards to play with in Dominaria for sure. Oh yeah, me too. I've been playing Black White Benalia. Oh, right. On Magic Online? Yep. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's been my deck of choice. Yeah, one of my favorite things about History of Benalia is that it rewards you for playing so many copies of itself because they work so well in conjunction with each other. So some of the most devastating starts can just be History of Benalia into History of Benalia oh, yes. into History of Benalia. Attacking with buffed up creatures, what I like to do. All right, here you go. Karn. Karn coming down for Matthew. <laughs> and we are actually going to make an uh, artifact here, it looks like. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty interesting play. Like, Matthew does have four artifacts on board, so he's going to make a 4-4 four, four potentially every turn. And then after that, it'll become a 5-5. Five, five, and then he can start using Karn to get some card advantage after that. So pretty nice looking spot here for Matthew. Right there you go. You see the construct created by Karn. Oh, and he's going to use it to crew Heart of Kieran as well. Very nice. Yeah, this is a lot of damage coming through. And it only means more next turn because, you know, the Karn can tick up and crew Heart of Kieran again to keep the pressure on. Matthews from Erie, Pennsylvania has been playing since he was seven years old in 1995. <laughs> Plays a lot of Commander. His favorite is Gitrog Monster. And he mm -hmm. likes to brew, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks like he's debating whether to sack this Hope of Gearpour. Yeah, so this is going to lock out Keith from playing non-creature spells during his next turn. So which really prevents Keith from threatening the Karn theoretically with the history of Vanalia Knight token. Oh, man, I am loving this right now. So Keith had to take a read there of the Hope of Gerber. <laughs> Wait, what? I can't kill any of your stuff? <laughs> oh, boy. Chapter 2 here, History of Benali, another knight token comes down for Keith White. But probably a few dead cards sitting in his hand now because of that Hope of Gerber uh, sacrifice. Exactly, because Keith is a control deck, and generally they have a lot of non-creature spells, so that <laughs> mi might have stymied his plan a little bit. Knight of Grace here, the play for Keith White, and just uh, is, has to pass the turn back over to Matthew. Ooh, and a very nice Inventor's Fair gain one life on my oh, upkeep. I love it. <laughs> so far, Matthew's deck looks sweet. Yeah, I know. I'm really loving this, and especially with these colorless utility lands, it really gives you a different angle 
because normally in standard you're kind of forced to play as many dual lands as possible, but since he's mono black and a lot of colorless cards, he can really afford to play these cool lands like Inventor's Fair and Zolfir and Void. All right, so we're going to plus Karn here. And there's the trawler. Ooh, is that multi-format all-star scrap trawler? Yes, it is. <laughs> GP winner scrap trawler? Oh, wow. Maybe maybe he can do a back-to-back -back appearance. <gasps> I hope so. Oh, scrappy T. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to once again use, um, looks like we're going to use Karn here to potentially crew the heart, although Matthew is thinking about it. Yeah, he may be worried about the uh, History of Venalia popping off next turn, which will pump the Knight of Grace and both Knights to be 4-3s. So he might be in the market to kind of try and defend this Karn because, you know, the, the Karn minus ability is so powerful in Matthew's deck because you see so many artifacts. And you know what's interesting, too? The Scrap Trawler kind of doing double duty in this deck. The three power there, you know, able to crew something like Heart of Curin, but also we're going to get those Hope of Gearpers back if it dies. Oh, yeah, wow. That's a really interesting um, interaction that I really, really thought of because, you know, Hope of Gearpur, you always want to sacrifice it, and then Scrap Trawler can just get it back really easily. All right, so it looks like we're going to swing here with Heart of Curin. Scrap Heap Scrounger and the Construct. Mm. There, it looked like it was a fatal push, but doesn't really work like that yeah. on Knight of Grace, unfortunately. <laughs> Knight of Grace, Hexproof from Black, fatal push, Black spell. All right, we'll take down a token instead. Yeah, but still for Keith, I don't really think he has that great of blocks, given how Matthew still has two mana, or he he doesn't have two mana anymore, but the Scrap Heap Scrounder can just come back um, at any moment because he has those two Hoop of Gear Pours in the graveyard. So yeah, Keith White under a lot of pressure here. Scrounger is going to fall. Knight token down. So all we have left here is the Knight of Grace when we hit Chapter 3 on the history. And Matthew's life total at a healthy 21. Yeah, I definitely really like Matthew's spot here. You know, he can use any creature to crew the heart of Kieran, which is lethal. And it really forces Keith to, like, have an answer here. Or else uh, I think we're going to see Matthew win Game 1. Matthew bringing this really interesting mono black affinity brew here to the table at Grand Prix Pittsburgh. Ooh, and, uh, All right, we're just <laughs> digging for answers here for Keith cycling away a land. Yeah, the desperation cycle, never usually a good sign. No. He's been a little uh, stuck on mana this game, I will say. Mm hmm. Yep, and he's going to scoop him up. That is game number one going to Matthew Varsity on Mono Black Affinity. I'm excited. That was awesome. Yeah, right from the start when he was when he went Zolfirin, Zolfirin <laughs> Void, Scry One, I was like, oh, man, I, this is going right, to be a great match. All right, here we go, here we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking a look at Matthew's deck list here, and it's got some really interesting stuff, including... Phyrexian Scriptures. Ooh, I do enjoy playing with Phyrexian Scriptures. I've only ever played with it, of course, in Limited, <laughs> which it is excellent. Oh, I 100% I be I believe you. Yagmoth Vile Offering. Ooh, that's definitely one of my favorite cards. Um, I played a lot with that card during the uh, FFL period for Dominari, and it was super fun to play with. Oh, really? Yeah, and he has a, he has a fair amount of Legends to turn it on, too. He has Gaunti, Karn... Uh, Hope of Gearpur counts. Thraxos counts. So he's definitely got a lot of options going on here with uh, being able to cast his Yagmas file offering. So yeah, you mentioned Thraxos, Scourge of Krug, as we say, <laughs> or as I say in a Scottish <laughs> accent. I feel like you can't say it any other way. And Voltaic Servant in this deck. Well, so he, he's assembled the, 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 combo. Uh, the intended limited combo, but yeah. he's porting it over here to Constructed, which is really cool to see, I gotta say. Taking a look at um, his sideboard as well, we've got some other interesting cards. Mirage Mirror in here. Oh, wow. That is the, uh, the artifact, artifact that turns into any artifact from Hour of Devastation. If you pay two. Yep. Wow. Ooh. Okay. Hour of, a couple of Hour Glories, some Lost Legacies, and then stuff you would expect like uh, Duress and uh, Gifted Aetherborn, that kind of thing to help him gain some life. Right. He also has a, a healthy three Aether Seer Harvester, which I really, really like. It's an excellent card in, in this format. I 
I played it in my, you know, rest in peace Ceram deck. <laughs> uh, and it was just always, I always was happy when I drew it. Yeah. And I also really like these Hour of Glories slash more Vrasa's Contempt in his sideboard because he's really making a concession to deal with, let's say, cards like Hazaret or uh, Fl uh, Phoenix? What's its name? Rekindling oh, Phoenix. Rekindling Phoenix. Sorry. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> the names have, that you've played with have undergone so many changes. Yeah, the names change all the time. It's really hard to keep up, but, uh, you know, I try my best, Maria. I try my best. You're doing great, man. Oh, thank you, thank you. How do you like working in R&D, by the way? Oh, I love it. It is, yeah, it's just one of my favorite things. Like, I get to talk and think about magic for at least eight hours a day. <laughs> I bet it's more. Uh, it's, pro it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's more. <laughs> <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, like we, on our lunch break, all we talk about is work. When yep. we go out to dinner, all we talk about is work. But, uh, you know, when work becomes, when your hobby becomes your job, then, you know, some lines blur, but I, I still love it. And it's very rewarding to just watch people play with cards that I had a hand in making. How is it strange to watch kind of something that you've helped bring into this world kind of come to life in front of you? Um, it hasn't quite hit me yet. Um when Dominaria was being made, I, was, I wasn't I was as confident in my skills as a bouncer or designer, um, but uh, I'm really excited for the uh, fall expansion, uh, Guilds of Ravnica, because I had a big hand oh, in making that. Too. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> Ravnica, Return to Ravnica was the first set I ever played. Oh, wow, really? Yes, and I loved it. I mean, it was, it's fabulous for people who are coming into the game, too, because the guild system is so easy exactly. to, get, to wrap your head around, you know? Yeah. And you can kind of identify with one of the guilds and kind of lock in on that. And I'm like, oh, I'm Rakdos. That's <laughs> what I am, you know? Is that, is that who you are? Absolutely. Oh, okay. All right. Well. 100%. Attack. Unleash. Always unleash, Andrew. All right. It's my favorite mechanic. Did you know that? Oh, I did not know that. But uh, I will we'll make sure to attempt to try and... Uh, make more <laughs> Unleash cards, perhaps. Yes. yes. Okay, <laughs> excellent. I've got the best seat in the house here, everybody. <laughs> yeah, you get to influence the future of magic design. What about that? Ooh, I like it. How about printing me another 1-1 one, one for 1 with Hexproof? Are you into that? I have no comment on that. <laughs> I did try to um, twist Mark Rosewater's arm on that once. Oh, sure. And he said, no. <laughs> Just... <laughs> not happening maria stop it your deck's already degenerate you don't need another <laughs> <laughs> one one for one with hex proof yeah mark does a lot of work on the earlier side of design while i'm more on the final side of design so you'd really have to twist my arm and several other arms okay. at the same time okay fair <laughs> enough <laughs> all right so players here drawing their opening hands for game number two here still in round one grand prix pittsburgh White Black Benalia versus Mono Black Affinity. Yeah, Matthew I'm got game one. Yeah, I'm really liking Matthew's deck. Just like being able to play all these utility lands, like exactly like Sulfur and Void, can just give him those little edges. Like he just scried to the bottom there. Right. Like theoretically, Sulfur and Void there just said draw a card. All right, and so we've got our turn one play here in hope of Gearper. Probably optimal here for Matthew. All right, another blood fast for Keith White. So this game looking pretty similar to what we saw already in uh, game number one. Yeah, looking <laughs> exactly the same, actually. Exactly the same. Pretty and you know what? The hope can get in there, too. Boop. Yeah. Pretty sure Matthew is not going to sacrifice that. But theoretically, he could to stop a history of Benalia. But I, I don't think that's the play he's going to make. All right, Voltaic Servant, giving this hope of gear per vigilance. <laughs> Go. Well, that's more, uh, that's, that's more of a build-your-own-vigilance. <laughs> <laughs> you do what you can. Right, Keith. Here are three mana available, but I don't see... Does he have double white? Yes, he does. So he can yes. play his history. Yeah, that does seem like the play he wants to make here. And... <laughs> I did talk about it, but Matthew could have sacrificed his hope of gear board to, to prevent. Make, oh, you're right. But, uh, yeah, I don't think that. I mean, seriously, though, how important is it to keep them off doing this on turn three? Uh, yeah, like, let's say if Keith had another of history banalia after this, like, it will be pretty de pretty devastating. Because I said earlier, like, the best card to play with history of banalia is just more history of banalias. 100%. 
All right, so there we go. Knight token coming into play for Keith White. History Benali was to play. Hope of Gerper here hitting the red zone. Going to knock Keith down to 18. And then, yep, sure enough, we are going to sacrifice it. So Matthew here protecting himself a little <laughs> bit from a second history. And there's another hope. And if you see uh, on Matthew's side of the battlefield, we see a Memorial to Folly, one of my favorite yes. favorite utility lands to play with because you just got you have so many options in the late game, and you know, it's a land. It's almost free. Almost comes in tap. <laughs> yeah, and you mentioned you know the the mono black base for this affinity deck, allowing Matthew to kind of put these. I was going to say fun lands <laughs> in, but, you know, utility lands is a better way to put it. Memorial Folly, Zalfir and Void, and we saw Inventor's Fair last game as well. Yeah, I'm really liking the looks of uh, Matthew's deck. You know, if he untaps and plays a Traxos, right, like he's in serious business here because um, I think I caught a peek of Keith's hand. It's all he really has is Lyra Dawnbringers yeah. and Fatal Pushes. Dawn Dawnbringer, not bad. Yeah, not not definitely not the worst against uh, the artifact squad with uh, no abilities. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! That Voltaic servant has an ability. <laughs> he yeah, he has <laughs> he has an ability. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. Okay, so hope of gear pure once again pinging in, uh, drop Keith down to 15. Looks like an activation there of the blood fast took a little bit of his life as well, and we're once again we're going to sacrifice it. And is it going to be another one? Sure enough, wow. Third time's the charm for Hope of Gearpoor. <laughs> I'm loving this. It is a really interesting way to keep your opponent from <laughs> doing anything that can hurt your plan. But no other play other than the Hope of Gearpoor. Yeah, and with this history popping and most likely a follow-up with Lyra Dawnbringer, I really like Keith's um, spot in this game because, you know, if Matthew doesn't have a removal spell here... This is going to be a pretty tough game to come back from. All right, so that is quite a lot of damage coming through here from Keith White. Chapter 3 of History Benalia dropped Matt down to 12. And sure enough, there's Lyra. Yeah, Matthew's going to really need to come up with something awesome here to deal with this Lyra Dawnbringer and these knights and this Arguel's Bloodfast. I mean, the servant does block a knight. <laughs> I will say that. Uh, that is technically true. He does does get to block a knight. All right. All right. Gifted Aetherborn here for Matthew. Yep. Pretty serviceable blocker for the knights, which only allows Keith to get in with his uh, Lyra Dawnbringer currently. And he is packing removal spells as well, so trying to see what he might have to be able to deal with that Lyra. We do have Aura of Glory, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Fatal Push, though, is going to take down the Gifted Aetherborn. And Hope of Gearper is just going to chump, jumping in front of that Lyra. Yeah, definitely not looking too good here for Matthew as another great follow-up in Knight of Grace. Two Knight of Grace. Knights of Grace, I should yeah. say. Yeah, so we've uh, got Matthew here scooping him up. That is game number two going to Keith White, who is able to just kind of do what his deck does best, play a History of Benalia on turn three, make some knights, and attack face. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely one of your most favorite things to do in this format. 100%, Andrew. 100%. Yeah, Keith's deck really just living up to its name by, like, playing a diverse game. Like, you get to play all these enchantments, like Arquel's Bloodfast and History of Benalia, and then he followed it up with Lyra Dawnbringer and Knights of Grace, which are Extra good against the mono black oh, deck. Oh, yes. <laughs> Which you, you can't touch this <laughs> in this matchup. Hexproof from black. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting how important that has turned out to be in this mm -hmm. metagame, too. And there's always the question, if you're running white-black Benalia, or black-white Benalia, excuse me, are you playing both knights, Knight of Grace and Knight of Malice, or just one? Um, you know, it really depends, like, because the... The both knights are so powerful against like the um, mono red deck because they have so many blockers that so many attackers that have less than two toughness. There's like on crop crasher, bomat courier, theoretically soul scar mage. So those knights really jump in front of those really well, and they can defend the deck enough so that can play great cards like Lyra Dawnbringer and more history. But <laughs> yes. So how do you? 
feel Matthew's deck kind of shapes up against the metagame that we know, which is so heavy, Goblin, Chain Whirler, heavy. Does he just not care? He just sacrifices it when if the hope is in play when the Chain Whirler comes down? Uh, yeah, well, if we can take a closer sure. look at his deck list right here. Yeah, I actually... I actually generally like his deck against the the flavors of black or red because normally they're just trying to play a bunch of strong cards on curve, but you know theoretically he could go over the top with cards like Yogmoth's Vile Offering, Karn, Gaunti. Like those are also like individually powerful cards that can go punch for punch with some of the red cards. And the ability from Hope of Gear per sacrifice to can like we saw in game one here against a deck like Black Red, which has so much removal, mm -hmm. can really kind of slow them down, too. Yeah. And Phyrexian Scriptures uh, exiling the graveyard on the final note can actually get rid of uh, Rekindling Phoenix in the graveyard if the egg is in play. Oh, that's right. Yeah, a little known fact. <laughs> <laughs> the egg. I love it. Yeah, poor little egg. He, uh, he takes a beating sometimes. Dragon Egg's coming back. Oh, with yeah. 19. With the new egg creature type. Oh really? Yes. Creature type egg. Creature type egg. I'm, I'm not a hundred percent certain, <laughs> but uh, I, I think that is what we've done. That's hilarious. Stop trying to spell dragon with an I, Maria. That's not what I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, my laugh was so wheezy there. <laughs> I'm trying to pull up the M19 version. There we go. Yes. Creature dragon egg. Creature sure dragon enough. egg. All right, here we go. Game number three, Keith White, Black White Benalia, Matthew Barsity, Mono Black Affinity. Yeah, I'm really excited for this final game. As we can see, Matthew's on the play, which gives him a slight advantage in this matchup, I think, because Keith's histories are going to come down one turn later, which means he can't apply as much pressure. All right, Heart of Kieran here for Matt on turn two. No play yet from Keith White. Yeah, if Matthew can get the beat down going, I, I go. like his spot here, yeah. And mm. we've got a push. Well, not as much. And there is hope coming down for Matthew. Scrap Heap Scrounger already in play as well. And turn three, doing what he wants to do. There's a history of Benalia for Keith White. Yep, this is going about as well as Keith can hope right now, like uh, getting down the heart of Kieran and then playing History of Benalia on time. This is exactly what he wants to happen. See it settle the wreckage in hand as well for Keith. And we're just going to turn our creature sideways here for Matthew, getting in for four, and knock Keith down to 16. And there is a second follow part of Kieran there for Matthew, the one living in the graveyard currently. Yep, Heart of Kieran's brother, upset that his sibling has met the has bit the dust. And are uh, ships can ships be brothers? Um, I guess why not? Yeah. Oh, Rashad <laughs> says they're sisters. You're okay, right. Ships right. are ladies. Good point. Yeah. Another fatal push in hand. By the way, for Keith White, I see it hiding back there, and a Knight of Grace here as well. And we're going to tap out for a pair. Wow, wow, this, this <laughs> is this is going to represent a ton of damage from Keith's side. So once that history pops, the theoretically the knights are all four damage. So this is 16 damage coming at Math Matthew, and two of it is first strike, and the other two are vigilance. Wow, so Matt here, Zelfir and Void was the play scryed to the bottom. I'm not sure he has any way to deal with this in his list. Yeah, um, not quite sure. Uh, if we can take a look here. Oh, four mana Phyrexian scriptures? It could be. Oh, uh, it's a Karn. Karn. Karn? You know, there you go. You make a construct. Yeah, this this construct can now battle with uh, some of the Vigilance Knights. Might as well get in for four while we're at it here. Yep. All right, so Keith will drop down to 12. And here we go. Chapter 3, History of Benalia, after the draw step, is going to pump up all of these knights. An enormous threat, and as we said, we uh, we do know that Keith does have a fatal push in hand, at least one of his cards there. 
and to settle the wreckage. Yeah, and if Keith attacks here, um, Matthew can just elect to not block here because he's representing so much damage on the backswing because those Knights of Grace have to tap. And that's true. He can make another construct theoretically, so he can, yeah, Matthew can represent so much damage here. But he's got to be careful, right? You've got to think of something like Settle coming in from Keith White. That's true. Okay, so it looks like an all-out attack here from Keith. And I think the Knight and the Knight of Grace and the Knight token, I think one pair is going towards Karn and the other pair is going towards Matthew. Okay. All right, so it looks like the Hope of Gearper thinking about jumping in front of a Knight of Grace, the Construct in front of one of the Knight creature tokens. Yeah, and it looks like Matthew's very interested in preserving his Karn. Right. Um, Keith's done a good job to represent the game state pretty well as to where the attackers are going. All right, so we got a block and a sacrifice of the hope here from Matthew. The construct falls. Yeah, Matthew clearly valuing his Karn very highly here because um, I think it represents, like, a longer game that he can play because, you know, Karn can keep ticking up, getting card advantage, and uh, eventually pull him out if Keith doesn't have any um, awesome plays lined up. All right, so we're going to plus on Karn here. Two lands, Inventor's Fair and The Void. There we go, Zolfir and Void, just more edges. And he did. All right, to the top. To the top. All right, so Karn here jumping in. Heart of Kirin, I believe. And there's Phyrexian Scriptures. Chapter one, we're going to put a counter on something. It's going to be the hope. And here we go. Fatal push. Down it goes. But yeah, this Phyrexian Scripture is going to do a ton of work for Matthew if he can survive the next turn because all of the non-artifact creatures are going to be destroyed next turn. Yeah, we've got a lot of damage coming his way, and it looks like his Karn is probably not long for this world as well. Yeah, but this Scrap Heap Scrounger still going to keep trucking along, yeah, most likely. that's right. <laughs> There's a look at Phyrexian Scriptures. Chapter 2 happening next turn, destroy all non-artifact creatures. Chapter 3, exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards. All right, so it looks like... Two going at Karn, just to make sure. Yep. Uh, Keith making sure that his attack is safe if um, Matthew theoretically had a, a fatal push. And the Knight of Grace will get in for a couple here as well. Three damage. Oh, yeah, three because of the Fraction Scriptures. Fraction Scriptures is a black permanent. Matt down to nine life. Another history of Benalia, it looks like, in hand for Keith, and he's just going to pass the turn back. Chapter 2, Phyrexian Scriptures. Pick him up. Goodbye, Knights. The Scrounger lives to fight another day. And I'm really interested to see what Matthew kept on the top of yes. his library, which I'm assuming he'll play now. All right, in it comes for three. Tying things up at nine life apiece. Another scrounger. Oh, Ooh, there it is! The Mirage, Mirage Mirror. Mirage Mirror. That's exciting. Okay, Mirage Mirror, you can pay two. It becomes a copy of target artifact, creature, enchantment, or land until end of turn. Very cool, very cool. But it still looks like Keith is sitting on that Settle the Wreckage, which is quite strong against these two Scrap Heap Scroungers right now. Yeah, nothing better than exiling a Scrap Heap Scrounger. Exactly. You're trying to deal with it. All 
All right, so here's our history of Benalia yet again here for Keith. 2-2 two -two Knight coming down. And a Knight of Malice. All yep. right. As you asked me earlier, do you play yep. both Knights? Apparently Keith plays both Knights. <laughs> I do like playing both. Yeah, you definitely so get good. more coverage and plus, like, cast out, Ixalan's binding, so many things that Hexer from White is actually relevant against. This has been a great game. Yeah, definitely. A lot of cool stuff happening. Thanks to Matthew for bringing us a brew, by the way. <laughs> oh, <laughs> is he copying the Phyrexian scriptures? Yeah, I think he is. Uh, and we're going to get chapter one of Phyrexian scriptures on Scrap Heap Scrounger. Yes. So we have a, a lore counter on our Mirage Mirror. <laughs> that doesn't happen every day. Definitely does not. Is this what you envisioned when you were future of future yeah, leaguing? It, it <laughs> not, uh, not to a T, but this is definitely a really cool interaction that I've never thought of before. Okay, so Keith White says, well, I guess these creatures might not be super long for this world. Yeah, and this Knight of Malice, as it is yeah. a 3-2 first strike, first is strike. going to be able to eat the 4-3 Scrap Heap Scrounger. All right, so the Scroungers are going to go into the yard here for Matt. Knight of Malice sticking around, and we're going to get another Knight on uh, Keith's next turn. But remember that Mirage Mirror <laughs> is a Phyrexian Scriptures. Yes, until <laughs> end of turn. So it only has one lore counter on it, I think. Oh, this is weird. It is weird. Um, so what can you... What would happen in, <laughs> if you activated it like if before... Oh, my gosh. Well, it's currently just a Mirage Mirror right now, but let's say Matthew had uh, another Phyrexian Scriptures. He could turn it into a copy of that during his upkeep, and then the lore counter um, after drawing a card would, tr would happen, so then it would destroy all non-artifact creatures. So it would still know that it had a lore counter on yeah, it. Yeah, because uh, uh, Ma Matthew has appropriately indicated that there is one lore counter currently on his Mirage Mirror. Okay. Ooh, that Knight token cannot attack. Great. All right, so Knight of Malice swinging in here. And Keith has been able to really rebuild his board quite nicely every time that Matt has gotten a little bit ahead with clearing it out of the clearing it up using Phyrexian scriptures and removal spells. Yep, history of Vanalia just doing <laughs> doing work, putting in a lot of knights. And uh, yeah, you know this Keith has drawn relatively well and you know he's been able to rebuild as you said. And <laughs> 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 the Mirage Mirror <laughs> becoming a history of Vanalia <laughs> Which goes to its second lore yes. counter, <laughs> which will get it at night. I love it. This is awesome. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> this Mirage Mirror. Some sweet tech from Matthew. Yeah, and next turn he can actually also make that Mirage Mirror into one of those um, Knight of Graces or Knight of Malices to block the 4-3 Vigilance Knight. All right, some decisions here <laughs> for Matthew. Currently sitting at six life to Keith White's nine. Yeah, this is really <laughs> interesting because I, <laughs> Mirage Mirror, I've never seen it used like this before, but it's such a creative use of just the way that lore counters and sagas work together. Okay, Voltaic Servant. Here for Matthew and is going to pass the turn back over to Keith. Two mana available, by the way. Yep. For I, that mirror. I anticipate him t to use the mirror to become either Knight of Grace or Knight of Malice. And Chapter 3, meanwhile, has activated for Keith. All right. A <laughs> little bit of math being done on the table there from Matthew. 
Yep, these are all... Uh, the Vigilance Knight is a 4-3, and the other knights are 5-3s. All right, here we go. Activate the Mirage Mirror. And it's going to copy the Knight of Malice. Mm -hmm. Let me see where if he wants to do all of that, because he's going to trade. Yeah, he could offer the trade for the Knight of Malice. He could also double block the History of Benalia token with the Voltaic Servant and the Knight. And that's a total of five toughness, so Keith would only be able to remove one of them. I actually like this block a fair bit. You know, it, it, uh, it opens up the possibility of, you know, attacking back with the Scrap Heap Scrounger and potentially drawing something powerful like Karn or Frexing Scriptures. <laughs> and keep in mind, those that uh, two dice on top of the Mirage Mirror are actually lore counters. <laughs> Not plus one, plus one counters. That is right. So yeah, here it looks like Matt's blocks electing for the double block there on the Knight token and the uh, offering the trade here, Knight of Malice on Knight of Malice. So those two are going to trade. The Mirage Mirror is going down. Very, very sad. Voltaic Servant falls in this exchange and the Knight of Grace gets through. So Matt will be down to one life. One life. But yeah, I generally like that um, exchange from Matthew because you know, he got to trade a large Benalia token for a Voltaic Servant, which is a, a trade I'll make most likely every day. Zelfir and Void here again for Matt. He's going to be able to scry. Ooh, is that a Scriptures in his hand? That is a Phyrexian Scriptures in his hand. And what's in Keith's hand is a Settle the Wreckage. Yeah, so if Matthew elects to attack with his Vigilance token, that will leave him dead on board. But, you know, Keith might actually not do that, fearing uh, another follow-up and not actually going for the win. So really interesting spot here for both players. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. Very important attack here for Matthew. Taking a look at uh, what's already been played, what's already in Keith's graveyard, just double checking. A lot of stuff exiled there because of Phyrexian scriptures that we saw earlier. All right, it looks like he's made up his mind, at least, very least, to play this for <laughs> <laughs> scriptures. <laughs> oh, or has he? Or not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. This uh, is not going to be pretty. Oh no. Yep, Keith had it. There is a settle. Yep, and that is going to be uh, curtains here for Matt, although uh, Keith does not necessarily know that yet. Yeah, uh, and given that that Knight of Grace has Hexproof from Black... Oh, yeah, that's a good point. It's fairly safe for yeah. Keith to assume that there's no sort of fatal push or removal spell coming from Matthew. This is kind of how I feel when, like, I know I'm going <laughs> to die, but I'm like, oh, should I... Should I still just play my <laughs> no, whatever <laughs> handshake? There it is. Keith White takes down this match here in round one versus Matthew Varsity's Mono Black Affinity deck. Got to say, super sweet deck, Matthew. Yeah, I really enjoyed watching all those like utility lands and the Karn and the Phyrexian scriptures. It was really awesome to see all those sweet cards. All right, well, we'll have more magic for you from Grand Prix Pittsburgh coming up after this.
Grand Prix Pittsburgh, Murray Bartholdi in the booth, joined by Andrew Brown. Hello. Of R&D at Watsi. A real privilege to have you here commentating with us this weekend. Thank you. It's a privilege to be alongside you as well. Aww. All right. So we're in round one here, and it's time for some time walk magic. So let's head down to our feature match area previously recorded. We're going to take a look here at what's going on. And, you know, <laughs> it's what we've seen a lot of. Matt Baccio there on the left side of your screen. Already got the Beaumont Courier in play. Paul Wu on the right side. Lanawar Elves the play here. So this is a tale as old as time of the one drops. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these are some of the most powerful one drops in the format. So both players have some of the s strongest opening draws that they can have. Yeah, like Matt can follow up with Heart of Kieran. Paul could theoretically play a Steel Leaf champion. So a lot of options here coming from two very powerful openings. All right, here comes the courier. Getting in there, exiling cards under itself, little robot mailman. <laughs> and Heart of Kieran, just like you said. Exactly. And uh, I believe Bomac Courier was designed as a top-down robot mailman. Okay, so what do you mean by that? So top down is normally when we meet when we say that we mean the like the flavor or the lore of the card or comes before the actual text box. Like we think what would a robot mailed man do rather than come up with, okay, here's a one one that does this. Sure. And then it's a robot mailman. It's the other way around. It's here's a robot mailman. What would that do? <laughs> All right, so this is the best turn three play we can ask for from Paul Wu. That is a glorious Steel Leaf champion. Yeah, I do believe that is the game day promo. Oh, that looks sweet. Yeah, so <laughs> these players both doing it exactly how they drew it up. Yep. <laughs> we have Bo Matt Courier into Heart of Kieran, and we have a Lanor Elf into Steel Leaf champion. Uh, also, Lanor Elf into Steel Leaf champion, kind of how we drew it up, too. <laughs> oh, I believe it. <laughs> and if Paul, you know, we're not exactly... Oh, well, we're going to play here uh, Scrap Heap Scrounger and be able to crew this Heart of Kieran. Mm -hmm. For Matt, getting in there for four. Yep, but uh, I believe Paul is actually the one who's on the beatdown plan currently because this Steel Leaf champion takes out a quarter of Matt's life every single time. And this Bomac Courier can't really block. Robot Mailman afraid of yeah. Giant Elf on a saber tooth thing saber tooth thing <laughs> sure that's what it looks like yeah and with no red mana left potentially sacrifice our little robot friend just gonna sit back yeah um i played a lot of green stompy decks in the future future oh, league yeah? and uh yeah lanor elf into steel leaf champion no feeling better than that you get the beat down, you get defense. It's uh, it's just awesome. And Paul Wu agrees with you here, swinging in, taking Matt's life total down to 15. Yeah, he can follow it up with a ton of awesome plays here. Maybe another, How about another one champion. All right, thrashing Bronton on will have to do for now. Yeah, one of the great thing about this uh, this mono green stompy deck is that the three drops are so powerful, like Steel Leaf Champion. Thrashing Bronzedon, excellent cards in the format. Because and as we see with Goblin Chain Whirler, the, the magic number on First Strike or with Lightning Strike is three. Right. So if you have that fourth toughness, it really puts you over the edge in avoiding some of the um, removal spells in First Strike. And uh, the ability as well on this Bronzedon of being able to take down any number of Matt's creatures <laughs> exactly. if he so chose. But just an excellent blocker, as you mentioned, too. Yep, and again, four toughness. Yep. <laughs> Holding down the fort. Yeah, Paul did actually miss a land drop here, but that Lanor Elf coming in handy here. And if Matt doesn't have, let's say, a Goblin Chain Whirler or a Lightning Strike to deal with the Elf, Paul can still keep deploying these powerful forces like Steel Leaf Champion and Thrashing Bronodon. All right, so Matt here tapping four. Is it time for a Burb? No, it is time for a Chandra. 
So, Chandra, by the way, is pretty good at dealing four damage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the one way to kind of get around that here. That's, oh wow! Wow, I would that I would not have done that. The uh, the Chandra crewing the heart of Kieran with its final loyalty. It's very poetic. Yeah, very aggressive here too as well from Matt, swinging in with everybody. Yeah, I guess since he Eight saw that damage. Paul missed his land drop, he evaluated himself to be the aggressor here and is really trying to take it to Paul. Yeah, Paul down to six all of a sudden after that play finds his third land. Trips Blooming Marsh, probably one of the, <laughs> the best third land you can have in that point. Absolutely. But now he's got to be very scared of that Heart of Kirin. Exactly. And with his Bronodon down, he doesn't have any way to deal with artifacts or enchantments currently. Although I would like to see him tap all of his Blooming Marshes for a Dread Shade. <laughs> oh, oh my god. I mean, I would also like to see that. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I think one of the best plays for Paul here would actually be another Thrashing Bronston if he had it. Um, because that shores up the weakness in the air to the heart of Kieran and can also theoretically block the Scrap Heap Scrounger. So when you printed Llanowar Elves, mm -hmm. when you reprinted it, I should say, um, why exactly did you feel that green needed that tool right now? Um, well, we wanted there to be like another iconic kind of green one drop. So, you know, we started with um, Birds of Paradise, actually. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, I remember, I think Mark wrote about it, but um, we, we even went into the Future Future League testing with uh, Birds of Paradise. But... Uh, we settled on, it was, it was adding a little bit too much five color fixing, which can be a dangerous thing for us going forward, just everybody being able to play as many colors as they want and really taking away from the identity of green itself being the premier man acceleration color. Sure. So we opted for Lanoir Elves and uh, yeah, here we are now. Scrappy Scrounger for Paul after an attack from the Steel Leaf Champion dropping Matt down to 10. So keeping the pressure on a little bit. Uh, two mana available for Paul, by the way, but that Heart of Kirin threatening to drop him down to two if unanswered. Yeah, this is a really interesting spot because um, normally when you see Llanowar Elves into Steel Leaf Champion, you assume it's just the mono green Stompy duck. But, um, you know, Paul's only played green and black lands so far, so it's safe for Matt to assume that, like, it's possible he could have a removal spell here. He could be kind of a sort of green-black, more mid-range exactly. type deck as well. Yeah, and you know this might give pause, uh, cause for pause for Matt to actually, if he actually wants to create that Heart of Kieran, because if Paul has a, let's say, a Fatal Push here, like that, that would be extremely powerful. Yeah, not good. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of cards under that Bowmat Courier currently, so I think it's pretty safe for Matt to kind of sacrifice the Bumat Courier to get all those cards back and try and refuel. Because I believe Paul has a lot of cards in his hand right now. Soul Scar Mage here, the, plat the play for Matt. Only a land left in hand. So yeah, all those cards under the Courier are looking pretty good at the moment. Yeah, that's just one of the main reasons Bumat Courier is so powerful is like in these late game situations when you've deployed all your threats, you just get a whole new hand. All right, so the Courier is going to come into the red zone as well as the Heart of Curin. At least four cards under that Courier. Yeah, I think it's five. Yeah, five. Um, yeah, it would be really interesting if Paul had a Fatal Push here. It looks like he should probably just block with the Llanowar Elves. It's really interesting, too, coming at it like kind of from a play design perspective, mm -hmm. um, that the red deck has so many tools that red decks haven't traditionally had access to, like a card like Bomat Courier. Right, yeah. Um, one of the main reasons I think red is so powerful right now is because um, you, know, you have so many diverse threats or different ways to play the game normally. Because like 
traditionally red decks like I'll attack you, all I have is creatures on the ground, and then my reaches burn, and there's a lot of counterplay involved there. Like, I could play, like, a 2-4. I can play some life gain spells, but, you know, this red deck has cards like Chandra Torch of Defiance, Glorybringer, Rekindling Phoenix, Hazard. So many difficult-to-remove permanents that traditionally are strong against conventional answers like blocking and life gain. And it used to have Raminap runes as well, I will point out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes it did. All right, so we got a sack there of the Bomat Courier refilling Matt's hand. Yeah, and it looks like Matt yeah. drew a lot of high-octane gas there. Kari Zeb is going to hit the table back over to Paul, who is currently on two life, Matt at 10. All right, so Paul kind of slow rolling himself there with that draw. Yeah. I don't think there are many cards that can get him out of this situation, given that Matt just has a whole new hand, that Heart of Kirin, Kari Zev, and, you know, the Scrap Heaps Grinder, too. It looks like too much to come back from. I will say I just absolutely love the design on Kari Zev. It's one of those... Yeah, Karizev, um, and uh, I talked about the top-down mailman. Karizev, yeah. kind of a, a top-down airship pirate that has a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love it. It's just a, it's just a really cool card design and flavor-wise, but also the way it plays out, just so, so much more powerful than it might even initially seem. Oh, my gosh. Is this a triple blossoming defense? Is it? What? One, two, what? three. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> wow, that was incredible! What? That was That was awesome. Almost unbelievable there. So we got we definitely wow. got the game stolen there by Black Green. And I was like reflecting too. I was like, man, Paul had all these awesome yeah. options. He had a great start, but no, he had it the entire time. He properly evaluated that he was the beatdown as the mono green deck. Wow, that was awesome. Steel Leaf Champion, triple blossoming defense. Take 11. Get him. Let's go to the next game. All right, Dueling Heart of Kirins are going to kick things off for us here. I anticipate that these will most likely be two ships in the night just passing along each other. Beautiful. Goblin Chain Rule on three here from Matt. By the way, those deck names swapped. But this is a time walk match, so that is the way they're going to stay, unfortunately. Pre-recorded. Yeah, hopefully Paul can, you know, play another Steel Leaf champion and crew and then attack for four again. And then we might be able to see another epic conclusion like triple blossoming defense. Wow, that was awesome. We've had some sweet games already. It's only round one here. Yeah, seeing that mono black affinity deck followed by an epic conclusion to a game one between black green and uh, black red aggro. I love it too because he was so calm. You know, if I was the, you know, red player, I would just be like, well, I obviously have it. <laughs> yeah. Like my hand is full of gas. I've got great creatures on the board. Ah, let your stupid five power guy through. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> Oh, th there you go. There's your Steel Leaf There's Champion. There's a Steel Leaf Champion. Jumping in the heart of Kieran, getting behind the wheel. In for four. Yeah, and if we take a look at that last game, like, to examine the damage that um, Paul did to Matt, that was attack with Steel Leaf Champion. Yep. Attack with Steel Leaf Champion. Attack again. Triple Blossoming Defense. I wonder how soon he had three of those. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's tough because... Um, that turn he actually left up the Llanowar Elves and the, Blo and the Blooming Marsh, it's possible that he could have used it on the defense, but instead he probably evaluated that, you know, this Steel Leaf Champion is my route to victory. Right. How do I win this game as opposed to how do I not lose? Exactly. Exactly. And those are the kind of decisions you have to make at, like, in such tense matches at Grand Prix and the Pro Tours. There's an Ether Hub for Matt who will just pass the turn back over to Paul. Yeah, no attack with the Heart of Kirin. Pretty interesting here. Um, it's possible that Matt could have double Lightning Strike or maybe Lightning Strike a Braid. I'm not sure. 
All right, the Green Belt Rampager has been uh, hiding in Paul's hand for a little while. He makes an appearance, jumps in a car, and then jumps Oop. back. <laughs> you know that classic, here comes an elephant, it jumps in a car, and then it's gone. Oh, yeah, classic. Yeah. And then the car hits you. <laughs> oh, boy. With an elephant behind the wheel? Yeah, just yes. makes it even more powerful, obviously. There's no chance that... Matt is looking to like trade off parts, is there? Um, it's a possibility. You know, after after seeing triple blossoming defense, it's definitely in the back of Matt's mind that Paul could have more of them. All right, so here we go. Yeah, and if I was Paul, I would just pass priority here. Yeah, exactly. Trade is good. Maybe a scrap heap scrounger or a merfolk. Oh. Another heart. And we'll probably see that green belt rampager as he does have enough energy now. And there is the, the mad elephant. So quite a good team here assembled for Paul and loss of a heart of Kieran and no follow up play, at least during Paul's turn. Chain whirler and another heart of Kieran for Matt. So there, that makes a lot more sense. Yep. That makes sense why Matt was so willing to trade off his first heart of Kieran. He's got a backup. I really love how Paul draws cards. <laughs> it's very precise. <laughs> I mean, that's what I meant when I, w I was not expecting him. I mean, nobody expects the triple blossoming defense, but still the way that he, that he has composed himself in this game is uh, very impressive to me. Yeah. And I actually like his position, too, because um, this Steel Leaf champion like, represents so much damage. And lest we not forget triple blossoming defense very nice follow-up oh excellent thrashing brontanon will take down the heart of kieran here definitely clearing the airways for his own heart of kieran i'd be interested if paul actually attacks with his steel leaf champion because since matt has open mana he is representing an attack plus let's say a lightning strike or an abrade right but if and there it is. The braid There's takes the down abrade. the heart of Kieran. No attack from the champion there. Yeah, which makes sense. You know, if if Paul attacked with the Steel Leaf champion, I would believe Matt would opt for the block with Chain Whirler, first strike damage, a braidier, um Steel Leaf champion. And since Paul had no open mana, he wasn't representing blossoming defense. All right, so back over to Matt. A couple of cards left in hand. One of them a land, one of them a Chandra. Yep. Rampager should be tapped as it got in the plane. Just the normal elephant in a plane. Just your average Monday. All right, so here comes Chandra. Yeah, I'm curious to what he would, Matt's actually going to do with this Chandra. Because um, if he does four damage to the Steel Leaf Champion, then the um, Green Belt Rampager has a pretty free attack onto the Chandra, unless he wants to chump block with your with the Goblin Chain Whirler. But it looks like that's what that's the play he's opting for. Um, so I wonder if he's actually going to chump block with the Chain Whirler to, you know, to save Chandra. To save Chandra. What do you do if that's if your last card in hand is a land? Um, well, it looks like he's thinking about... He is attacking, so he is kind of relinquishing this Chandra and making it pretty much four mana deal four damage, which right. isn't, isn't the best card. Um, so it looks like a pretty free attack from Paul, and uh, then he also gets to follow up with something else, so I really like the mono green player's position here. Paul already up a game here in game two in our time walk match round one. And the Rampager here in at Chandra. Chandra falls down. Nothing but a land left in hand for Matt. But I think it is actually a canyon slow, so he can cycle that for okay. more action. And another green belt Rampager reveal. Steel Leaf Champion comes down. Reveal again. Get some energy. 
back over to Matt. So looks like two energy for Paul, so he only has to spend one mana for that green belt rampager next turn. All right, and there's the cycle. See what he can come up with here. I think he drew a Soul Scar Mage and an Abrade. Okay. Which is pretty nice. Because that Soul Scar Mage can put three minus one minus one counters on that Steel Leaf Champion. So this is this is really shaping up to be a pretty good game here. And there's a Soul Scar Mage hitting the table for Matt. Baccio, an East Coast player, got second at Grand Prix Louisville in 2016 on a team. Very cool. Yeah, but things are not going to be so great for Matt if Paul has another blossoming defense because I think a lot of Matt's plan here is to use this abrade to kind of eat one of the creatures with the Goblin Chain Whirler. But if there's a blossoming defense waiting for him, then it's going to be really hard for Matt to win. And we've seen Paul just keep his foot on the gas both in game one here and in game two. Yeah, he's correctly evaluated that I am the person who's supposed to be attacking, which when you're playing five fours for three. I believe that is, that's generally the plan. <laughs> I mean, sometimes people get a little scared though, because they're like, well, I'm playing versus this, you know, red deck whose whole job is to just try and smash my face in. Yeah. It is easy to default to, I should be defending myself with my green creatures, but it is good to remember my green creatures are actually just a lot bigger than your cards. <laughs> <laughs> and there comes the second rampager there for Paul. Yeah, and I can just imagine Matt thinking about those blossoming defenses there, and I think that's why he didn't go for the block of braid, if he has an abrade, which I think he does. I think I saw it. Matt's life total down to eight after that attack from Paul. Yeah, the elf riding a saber tooth cat and an elephant do hit for a lot. Is that what it is? Uh, I think so. Um, Let me take a look. Do some research. Oh my gosh, it is horrifying when you really <laughs> take a look at what that elf is riding. Some kind of beast, those teeth on it. Very spooky. My favorite thing about the Sea Leaf Champion art is the eye patch that the elf has. Oh yeah, I love it. All right, we're speeding things up here as we get ready for round two here in the building. An all out attack there from Paul Wu in a braid. Mm -hmm. from Matt that he had in his hand. We'll put three minus and minus encounters on the Steel Leaf Champion, and there's the block. Goblin Chain Ruler on the Champion. Soul Scar Mage on the Elephant. Mm -hmm. Scrap Heap, the follow-up play there from Paul. Another Scrap Heap from Matt. In goes the team, and there is the handshake. Paul Wu over Matt Baccio. Two games to zero. Yeah, that game was so much fun to watch. Like, that triple blossoming defense for the victory <coughs> in game one. Did not even see that coming. I was talking about... How could you? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, I thought Matt was done for. Uh, no, I thought Paul was done for, but then he's... One blossoming defense? Two, two blossoming defense? Three. three blossoming defense. Yeah, if you're just joining us now, um, you're going to want to go back and watch our first... Definitely. Match of the round Definitely. as well. Mono Black Affinity was the deck that got played. I can tell you how it turned out, but it was really awesome to see in action. So mm -hmm. some pretty cool stuff already here from Grand Prix Pittsburgh. More magic coming up after this. <laughs> 